Okay, thank you for being here. My name is Ben Hikes. Today is March the 20th, 2024. I'm going to be talking about looking for a king. But before we start out, let's, let's look to the Lord in word of prayer. Dear Father in heaven, as we come before you this afternoon, we give you thanks for another day you've given us. We thank you for your goodness and mercies towards us, Lord. We just pray that you would be with me. May your Holy Spirit indwell in me and give me the words to speak. And may the words that I speak, may they be a blessing to us. Uh, to those who hear it. For you said that your word would not return unto you void, but it would accomplish for what that which you have set it forth to do. So work in me, be with me, guide and direct in all things that is said and done. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, so what I'm going to be talking about, like I said, is looking for a king. Okay, uh, I'm going to be reading a few scriptures here, starting with Matthew, Matthew 21. Matthew 21, 1 through 17. And this is when uh, the triumphal entry. Okay, Jesus. And when they drew near unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethpagia unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find an ass or a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them to me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophets, saying, Tell ye the daughters of Zion, Behold, the king cometh unto thee, meek and setting on an ass, and a colt, the foal of an ass. And the, and the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them and brought the ass and the colt and put them put on them their clothes and and they set him thereupon and a great multitude spread their garments in the way others cut down branches from the trees and strew them in the way. And a multitude was that that went before and that followed cry Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when they, and when he was come to in, into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? The multitude saith, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. You see, they, right there, they, 
They wanted uh, Jesus to be the the king. Well, this doesn't mention the king yet, but in Luke, we'll probably come back to this one later. But in Luke, no, Luke doesn't um, mention the, the triumphal entry. It's Mark, Mark 11. Mark 11, 1 through 11. That was the same account. I'm going to read all three, Matthew, Mark, and John. Mark chapter 11, verse 1. And when they come nigh to Jerusalem, into Bethpagia, <clears throat> and Bethany, at the Mount of Olives, he sent forth two of his disciples and said unto them, Go and go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, wherein neither man sat. Loose him and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye, the Lord hath need of him, and straightway he will send him hither. And they went their way and found the colt tied at the door without in a place where the two, two ways meet, two ways met, and they loosed him. And a certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye, loosing the colt? And they said unto them, Even as Jesus had commanded, that they, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and cast their garments on him and set him on him. The disciples cast their garments on him and he, Jesus, sat upon him, the colt. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees and strew them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And Jesus entered into Jerusalem, into the temple. And when he had looked around about upon all things, and, and now the eventide came, and he went out into Bethany with his 12. Okay. <clears throat> That's another account. But John goes and tells, and he has more detail. And that's John 12, starting with verse 12 and going through 16. John twelve twelve. And on the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, 
took branches of palm trees and went forth to meet him and crying, Hosanna, blessed is the king of the Blessed is the king of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord. See, John is one that said that the people called him a king. And Jesus, when he had found a young ass, set upon, thereupon, and as it is written, Fear not, daughter of Zion. Behold, thy king cometh setting up on the colt's ass. These things understood not his disciples at the first, but when Jesus was glorified, then remembered they these things were written of him and that they had done these things unto him. And, okay. Okay, that's, that's, yeah, I stopped at uh, verse 16. But Jesus, okay. With all the accounts that, that the people were looking for a king, they were looking for Jesus to come into Jerusalem and to overthrow the Roman um, arm, well, the uh, occupation, and to set up his own kingdom here on earth. Okay. So, uh, Luke 22, Luke 22, starting at verse 24, His own disciples uh, thought it was time for him to uh, come and set up his earthly kingdom. And there was also a strife among them. Which of them should be accounted the greatest? And he said unto them, the king of the the kings of the Gentiles exercised lordship over them, and they that exercise authority unto them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief, let him that doeth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth? Is not he that sitteth at meat? But I am among you as he that serveth. See, he said Jesus wasn't considering himself a king, but a servant. And ye, and ye, ye are they which have continued with me in my temptations. And I appoint unto you a kingdom, as my Father hath appointed unto me, that ye may eat and drink at my table, 
in my kingdom and set on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, he, he was talking metaphorically or, or spiritually here. He wasn't talking about a literal kingdom out here in the future that, that he would set up. That's what everybody else is looking for. Everybody, even his disciples, even in the time when he was speaking, people were looking for him to come and set up a literal kingdom. And even today, many are, are still looking for him to, to do that. But, uh, but his kingdom is spiritual not literal. Okay. Now Matthew, Matthew 26 also has some, something to say. Let's go to Matthew 26. Starting at 47 through 56. 46. Sorry. No. Matthew 26. 47. And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came with him a great multitude with swords and and staves from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. And henceforth, and yeah, and forthwith, he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherever art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck the servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then Jesus said unto him, Put up, uh, again thy sword into its place. For all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that thou mightest, that that such it must be? In the same hour, Jesus said Jesus to the multitude, Are ye come as against the thieves with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily in the, in the teaching in the temple, and ye laid not hold of me. But all this is done that the scriptures and the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all his disciples forsook him and fled. See, at that time, he wanted, I mean, they, his disciples wanted to use a sword to, uh, to keep him from taking him away. And we're going to see that 
in John 18, but we're not going to go there yet, where he said to Pilate, yeah, okay. Um, Mark, Mark 14 also says the same thing. So let's read it. Mark, Mark 14. Um, Jesus is betrayed. Okay. I think I lost my place. Um, because I wrote down Mark 14, but I didn't, it what, what verse to start with? But Mark, Jesus was trade and tried. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe starting with the first verse here. After two days with the feast of the Passover and the unleavened bread. Yeah, okay. The chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. And being in Bethany in the house of Simon, the leper, as he was set at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of an ointment and spangled. Spring, okay, very, very precious. Um, and she broke the box and poured it on his head. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, why was this waste upon of the ointment made. Why was the waste of the ointment made? It, for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. And Jesus said, Let her alone. Why trouble ye her? She has brought a good work on me. For ye have the poor with you always. And whensoever ye will not, we, ye will, ye may do them good. But me, ye have not always. I, she has done what she could. She is good aforehand to anoint my body for burial. Um, okay. See, uh, <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus knew he was what what he was uh, up against. And there's another scripture where where it said that uh, this lady that did this was um, was it Mary Magdalene? Or was it no. Um, when They were in the uh, house of Lazarus. Uh, Mary and Martha 
And Mary took the uh, perfume. And then, uh, that scripture said that uh, she she poured it on his feet and used her hair to to wipe it to wipe it off. And that anointing that was anointing his his feet for burial. And Mark eighteen. We're going to read from one to ten. And when Jesus had spoken these th these words, he went forth with his disciples over to the brook Sidron, Sidron, where he where there was a garden into which he entered, and his disciples, and Judas also, which betrayed him, knew the place, for Jesus often resorted thither with his disciples. He often went there. Judas then, having received a, a band of men and officers from the chief priests and the Pharisees, cometh thither with lanterns and torches and weapons. Jesus, therefore, knowing all things, that should come unto him, went forth and said unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them, I am he. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with them. As soon as he had said unto them, I am he, they went backwards and fell to the ground. Then they, then asked he them again, Whom seek ye? And he said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I have told you that I am he. If therefore ye seek me, let these go their way that the saying might be fulfilled, which he spoke of them, which unto saving me, I have lost none. I'll give it unto them, okay. Of them which thou givest me, I have lost none. And then Peter, Taking, get all right, Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's ear and cut off. Okay, I'm 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 not reading it right. I'm reading it ahead of myself. <clears throat> then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. And Jesus said unto Peter, Put up thy sword into this sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? And the band and the captain and the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. And we'll stop there. So, all the other accounts said that it was a certain a certain disciple. They didn't mention him except for except for John here. John here mentioned it. It was Peter that had the sword. 
there's a there's a place even maybe maybe it was in Mark maybe I just overlooked it but as, but Jesus asked if if there was if they had any swords and and they said uh, yes said there are two there are two swords and Jesus said that is enough and then they went out and I can't find it right now But Jesus had asked if they had swords. But then again, but in John eight, John eighteen thirty six, we're still in John. John eighteen. This is when. Jesus was being questioned by Pilate about about the kingdom, his what his what he accused him of. Okay, and um, yeah, John eighteen thirty six. Jesus answered, "My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight, that I should not be delivered on." delivered to the Jews, but now my kingdom is not from hence. And then Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this cause I came into the world, that I should bear witness of the truth for everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. And Pilate said unto him, What is truth? You see, they could have and and they wanted to the disciples, they all wanted to have him come and set up his kingdom. I think that is really what Ju Judas is in the maybe in the back of his mind was thinking that that if he betrayed him, that. That would cause the uh, the kingdom to be brought, or, or for Jesus to overthrow the the temple guards and the chief priests and the elders and all the Pharisees, and and that uh, Jesus would. Uh, set up a kingdom in Jerusalem and also overthrow the Roman occupation. But that wasn't his that wasn't his um, purpose as, as he said to, to Pilate. My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world 
then my servants would fight. Then I should not be delivered unto the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from thence. And then 28, I mean 38 says, Pilate said unto him, What is truth? See, Pilate was what they call a um, Gnostic or someone that there was a sect of uh, Greeks that that debated. They always debated the the newest philosophy or or things. It seemed like like the de debates we see uh, today, where um, psychologists, psychiatrists, and philosophers and I know that they'll debate on a subject that uh, that seems to be popular, and they'll try to uh, come to the bottom of of a certain subject, and and hopefully they'll they'll debate a subject and and then let it to the uh, the those that are watching or listening. To make up their own minds of what uh, what the outcome would be, and that's what that's what they did. So he said, but, but Pilate says, "What is truth?" And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, "I find in him no fault at all, but." Ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the per, at the Passover. Will you therefore that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And they cried. Then cried they all again. Saying. Not this man, but Barabbas. Now, Barabbas was a robber. He was the one that was to be crucified on the cross, or should have been, because of his, because him being a robber. But they released Barabbas and and crucified Christ. All right, Acts, Acts 1 has, another, has a uh, thing to say about it. Acts 1, verse 6. I'm going to read verse 6 and I'll start start back up at the first verse. When they therefore were come together, they ask, him, they ask of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore unto, restore again the kingdom to the Jews? To Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the other most parts of the earth. Okay. Now, Luke is the uh, writer of the Acts of the Apostles. 
and when he says, the former testes I have made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach unto the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Ghost, hath given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. So it'd be like Paul writing to the the Corinthians, which is first and second Corinthians, and first and second Timothy, and first and second Thessalonians. This could be this is Luke's second epistle, which was Luke Luke was his first epistle, and his second epistle was the Acts, the, the Apostles. Okay. Now we got that got that said. And so uh so I I'm going to continue in verse 4. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from, from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which he saith, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not from, for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his power. But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come unto you, and you shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. And we had, when he had spoken these things, while, he, while they beheld him, he was taken up and a cloud received them out of their sight. Okay. So, uh, so there you have it. Even after his resurrection and, and just before his, his ascension, they were still looking for him to set up a a natural literal kingdom. But let's let's look at First Corinthians chapter fifteen. It says the naturals did not come first or the spiritual. The spiritual did not come first. Yeah, let's read it. Uh, 46. 1 Corinthians 15, 46. <clears throat> Howbeit, it was not first which is spiritual. The spiritual didn't come first, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual. See, it takes the natural, it took the natural 
to explain the spiritual. In other words, people wouldn't understand what was being said. And still, even, even when Jesus was talking to Nicodemus in John 3 and explaining this, you must be born again, he was explaining the natural by you by the natural to to explain the spiritual and so the spiritual did not come first but the natural and after that the spiritual it did not say anything about the spiritual will ever become a return to the natural. What I'm trying to say is here that they were looking for a kingdom and Jesus was explaining to them using the natural to explain the spiritual. He was not going to come and set up his natural, literal kingdom here on the earth and he was trying to explain how by the natural we could understand the spiritual. So uh, <clears throat> So my question is for you to ponder what do you think about and if you have an answer for me please let me know. Why why are people still looking for him to return and still set up a natural literal kingdom when he you, he set up his spiritual kingdom in our hearts where it says in John 4, 24. John 4 and 24. When he's talking to the woman at the well, Okay, let's, go, let's start at 21. Jesus said unto her, well, verse 20 says, Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that, that in Jerusalem is a place where a man ought to worship. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Then a woman saith unto him, I know that the Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he comes, he shall tell us all things. Jesus said unto her, I that speaketh unto thee am he. But they that worship him, God is a spirit. And they that worship must worship him in spirit and in truth. 
those that still look for him to come and set up the natural literal kingdom um, how is that how is that possible since in, in uh in AD 70 when he said that, that the temple would be torn down that there would be not one stone left upon another and there are still there are some that say that they're going to rebuild the temple over in Jerusalem and they're going to reinstitute the sacrifices and that not according to the what I've what I've just read um, because they are the spiritual will not ever become natural it was the spirit spiritual has not come first but the natural and then after that the spiritual so that's you know palm sundays come up this sunday and and then after that is easter and so i i just pray that you receive something out of this message today i'm not trying to go against what other people teach my de my desire is to to know the truth for if you know, know the truth the truth will set you free so so let's close in a word of prayer dear father in heaven as we come before you to close this message we just pray that you would be with us all. I know this may be hard for some people to to understand or accept, but during this time, during this Easter time, the time that Jesus went into the temple, went into Jerusalem, his triumphal entry, to be our King, our Savior, our Lord, our, our Redeemer, and our Passover Lamb to, to bring unto us salvation. May we always remember that for all, even, even those in the back there, they, they wanted a literal King to to reign over them. But we have a king. He is our, our spiritual king in our spiritual kingdom. So Lord, help us, Lord, to understand your word and may we go forth proclaiming your salvation to those that are lost, those that are dying, those that are sick and afflicted, those that are possessed with demons. Help us to be with your power, to be servants in your kingdom. Now we ask that you lead God in direct in all things that we would say and do. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen.